Welcome to today's tutorial. So today we'll be talking about what is VW VH values and their usage. So VW stands for viewport width and VH stands for viewport height. The selected area is the viewport for desktop device and each device has a different viewport size. By using VW and VH values, you can make your website responsive. See how this current website is responsive to the viewport. However, in the second version, you can see that the content is not responsive. In today's tutorial, we'll be covering about how to use VWVH and what are the usage scenarios. First, let's start with how to use VWVH values. So there are two ways to add VWVH values. Now I have selected an element and the first way is when you click on it, you can choose the specific unit you want to choose. And the second way is you can directly type in the unit you want to use. For example, 100 VH here. Second, let's talk about when to use VW and VH values. And here I have made a website and I want to use this as an example to show you that what are some places that you should consider VH and VW values. So mainly speaking, it's when your design is related to the viewport size. For example, you want to fill up the whole page with an element like the title. So this website consists of three sections. And the first page is a 3D model with a title and a top bar. Going to the second page, there's animations. And the third page, there's images and text. Because I want to make sure each page is showcased in the entire viewport, so it's important to use section here. So even if I shrink down the browser size, it always only shows one page at a time. Let me show you how it looks inside the design editor. The three sections are very obvious here. And for each of them, I set up the width as 100 VW and the height as 100 VH. And the first design application I want to talk here is navigation bars. So in this design, you can see how the navigation bar is always on the left and the right hand side with icons having a nice padding. So this is when you want to use VW and VH. In this design, you can see how I set the width as 100 VW and the height of each for each icon. I also added a constraint for the VH. There's always a nice padding even though I change the size. So the second usage is in animations. Here you can see how this animation takes up the whole width and moves from the left to right. I will show you the process of making this. Here I have the first one set up with VW and VH values and the second one with only pixel values. So you can compare what is the difference between them. And for the first one, we go to 50 VH at our keyframe. We add one keyframe here. And then we add a top constraint. We add a left constraint. And in here, it's important to change the values to VW and VH because I am moving them from left to the right. This makes sure the elements stay in the correct position. And when we go to 75 VH, I change it to zero. And in the second one, we start at 75 VH. We add a top and left constraint as well. Then we go to 100 VW. See how here the constraints are set in pixels. We change it to zero. So now it moves to center. And if we see it in the editor, everything looks fine. Both shapes goes from the left to the far right. But if we publish, you will see how the first shape is going from the left to the right, but the second one is not going from left to the right because we did not use VW values in the constraint. And third is to use this in images. For example, here the design is to make this image take up half the space of the page. So if I adjust the image manually to 50% of the page, this is what will look like when I publish it. It is not actually taking off 50% because the width of my publisher viewport is different from the one in our design editor. So by default, our design editor uses the 1440 by 1024 size. So here, what we should do is change to 50 VW. And now, even when I change the size of our browser, the image still takes up 50%. And let's make a quick recap for today's video. So today we talk about how to use VW VH and also when to use these values, including navigation bar, animation, keyframes, constraints, and images. That's all for today's tutorial. Thanks for watching.